Welcome back to another video. Hope you are having a great day and today with something really special. This is the world's first touch display for Mac OS. That is true and it is amazing. Now touch display is not new and we have seen for Android, for Windows, Linux but for Mac OS this is the world's first and the experience has been great so far. I will share all the details with you. It has some really interesting features like an integrated battery and a few others. Now, if you are using Windows 10 or Windows 11 and you still haven't activated, don't forget to check out KeysFan, where you can find budget official OM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below in the video description, you will get an extra discount. The display model is the Extend Touch 1610F version 3. Link down below so that you can check all the specifications but version 3 is important that we remember because it is the version that is improved in terms of the integrated battery and also the capability to work with Mac OS. In terms of size as you can see by the image it is quite big and great so that we have an extended desktop with a lot of space. It has 15.6 inches full HD 1920 by 10 80 with an IPS screen which means that we will be able to take full advantage of the same features that we see on some normal displays especially on tighter angles without having color distortion which is what we get right over here. Now before we get into more details on the display itself because it has some really interesting things let's take a look on how it works on several operating systems starting with Windows. Now I didn't find any limitation at all, just works great. It works as a 10 point touch display with a very good precision and for those that want to have a Windows laptop with a extended display to take to work or stuff like that then this is just amazing. Besides being able to be used as a secondary display, having the access to touch which is something that Windows has been doing for quite some time and using it on everyday tasks like we do on our mobile devices is just awesome. I did several tests and the versatility is just great. I didn't find any limitations at all using Windows, especially because the operating system is ready for touch display like Android which we will talk next. Now on macOS there is a small limitation and I will try to explain as best as I can. On macOS it doesn't work exactly like a touch screen. It works like a touch pad. Now for those that don't have a Mac it's a bit more difficult to understand this but for those that have a Mac you can imagine the difference between the touch screen and the touch pad or the track pad to be more precise. But I will try to show you with images the best as I can. Basically everything that the trackpad does we can do as well but the advantage here is that we do it directly on the screen so the overall experience is just spectacular and honestly for me being the first time using a Mac with touch and I've been using Macs for the past 15 years or so it is a weird sensation but in a good sense. It's just great being able to have a trackpad or a touchpad to be more precise on the whole screen where I can just touch, select and drag and do what I want. The advantages here are just huge and despite not being recognized as a touch screen it brings a significant improvement to a dual screen setup on my Mac which is something that I use on a daily basis if we are editing videos, if we are passing data from one side to another, our email to an Excel sheet, we can do that on the classic way but at this moment we can also use our hands to to scroll, to browse, to touch things as we do on our mobile devices like phones and tablets and whatnot. So the experience is really really awesome although it's not exactly a touch screen and more a touchpad experience but this is a good, a huge step into the future in terms of Mac OS. Now looking at Android which I'm using at this moment with Samsung DeX the experience is also awesome. We can use with any Android phone. I just happen to use this one right over here which has two things that I love. The phone itself and also the Samsung DeX desktop which is a great experience. Very good behavior. It's recognized as a touch and it behaves like a touch like we would be using the original screen of our cell phone or our 
tablet. Now, if we want to play games on a larger screen or even use our mobile phone as a PC, this is ideal. Now, we have seen some setups right over here with other displays where I did show off Samsung DeX and we could take it to work. Just awesome. But now we also have the ability to have the touch screen and we can do a lot more and faster in this particular way. It's just an extension of our mobile device. Display is glossy and this means a few things. First of all, it has some vivid colors, really nice colors. We will enjoy working and having entertainment right over here, but we have the other side, which is glossy, will reflect light. So I would have this in mind. For example, at this moment, I don't have any light, so we just need to select the position that we put it. It has 60 hertz, so it will be great to edit photos, edit videos. It is the ideal for design work, I would say. But for anyone that wants to play some games, it's not bad at all, especially if we go from a mobile device to a monitor like this. And this version number three, as I said, has two improvements, actually more than two, but these are the ones that caught my attention, one of which is the battery. It has an integrated battery of 10,200 milliamps, which will allow us to have six hours of battery. So we don't need to rely on our phone and discharging the battery of our phone or our laptop. We can use it with everything that we want. It just needs to have an HDMI port, which by the way, is one of the improvements as well. It has a full HDMI port right over here, which sounds like something really simple, but most of the displays and all of the displays that I've used so far, micro HDMI or mini HDMI, which is the most common. And we also have to have an adapter or a different cable. And here, it's just an HDMI, normal HDMI cable, which is great. Now, talking about the inputs, we also have two USB Type-C ports and the HDMI that we have seen. We also have a 3.5 millimeter audio output and it is one centimeter thick which means that it's one millimeter thicker than version two. And the reason is battery and also the HDMI. Now, in terms of weight, it weighs one kilo without the magnetic cover and one kilo and a half with the magnetic cover. So it's not the lightest thing, but if you ask me, what about build quality? just awesome all around the display, the build quality right over here. The cover itself, it weighs half a kilo and it is magnetic and the magnetic is really strong. Besides that, it also offers a lot of protection. The only limitation that I found right over here on the cover is the angles that we can put the display. It's the only. We can put it on this angle right over here. I can adjust it a little bit further, a little bit back, but this is it. It also has a power button right over here, a USB 3.0 right on the bottom, which we can use to plug in a computer that does not have USB Type-C. I did forgot to mention that. And it also has the volume button right over here. Volume because it has two speakers, two watts each. And I would say that the volume, as you can imagine, is not the loudest, but the quality of the audio is really nice. So I would say that you will be fine using this for work with music where you don't need to be loud, but you want audio quality and you will get it. But if you want to be immersed in a game, for example, or you want louder music, then I would suggest either a um, headphone that we can connect via the 3.5 millimeter jack right over here, or even a speaker set that we can connect and have a greater sound. Now, in terms of the menu, which we can use the buttons to navigate, and in some cases that we have seen in the past, touch screens that do not touch on the menu. This one actually does. So it's really easy to select what we have on the menu. Very simple, as we can see on screen, it has the system options like battery information, volume, input and the language. It also has image options like colors, temperature, the HDR, gamma and the reset of values to factory default. Color options, sRGB and Adobe RGB between others and it's something really easy to use. So the display is plug and play and the menu just as easy as we've seen by some images. Now the question is who is this monitor for? Besides those looking for great images much quality and all the features that we have seen, I would say that it's basically for people looking for one or two in simultaneous features. One of which is the integrated battery that will last for six hours and we can use with any device. And this just opens a world of possibilities, being able to use with a device that will not 
power and doesn't need to power the monitor itself. And the other one, obviously, is for those that have a Mac, especially a MacBook Pro that you want to take out and you want a second display, having a great possibility besides the extension of the display, being able to use it with our hands, so, which is something that we use with our mobile devices on a daily basis. But this is my opinion. I would love to hear yours. I would love to hear if you did find this display awesome or not. And if you did, leave a thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.